Welcome to this Roblox series, which is going to be a series that includes everything you need to know from basics to the more advanced part of Roblox Studio scripting and Roblox Studio in general, but we're going to be focusing on scripting. In this first episode, we're going to learn about how to install Roblox Studio, the Roblox Studio interface, print statements, we're going to scratch the top of the variables and we're going to as well take a look at properties. So I hope you're ready because we're about to dive straight in and make sure to grab a snack, grab a cup of water and sit down and hopefully you can learn a thing or two in this video. As you can see here, uh, we have on Google here, which is the browser I apparently use. You could be using any other browser like Opera GX or uh, maybe you're using Microsoft Edge, it doesn't matter. So here we're going to go to create.roblox.com and it's going to lead us here to this page where we're going to click start creating. And of course here it's going to tell me to open Roblox Studio because I do have it, but for you it's going to appear like this if you don't have Roblox Studio. And then you're going to click on download Studio and then just follow the next steps and you're going to be able to download Studio with ease. Then once you open Roblox Studio, you'll be met with um, a screen like this and it'll tell you to choose one of the templates. And in our case, we're always going to be choosing the base plate template, but you can always check out, come here and check out the other templates just to see some of them and how they work if you want and experience with them. But in our case, we're going to be starting everything from scratch. So we're going to go for the base plate template. I'm going to click and we're going to load it. We should get us into the interface, as you can see, of Roblox Studio. All right. So now that we are in Roblox Studio, I'm going to talk about the interface and I'm going to show you about the interface. So we're going to start by learning about the interface. So the interface, there are a lot of sections of the interface and of course my Roblox Studio is a little bit customized but your Roblox Studio should still roughly look something like this. So there is the toolbox which uh, you use to get some free models which we're not going to be using often since we don't want to get any free models. We want to make everything from scratch. As well, there's a risk with free models since free models can actually end up in you getting a type of virus uh, that hacks your game. So uh, you need to watch out and make sure you check the scripts in your free models since they can create backdoors and things like this. But we're not going to get into that. And I don't recommend using any free models unless you really have to. Then we have this bar here, which shows you plenty of options. And there's uh, different tabs such as model, avatar, test, view, plugin. So as I was saying, we have model, avatar, test, view, and plugin. So all of these serve different purposes and as you can tell plugin here I have plenty of plugins but we're not going to look into any of those just yet. View is if something here is missing. For example if the output is missing you need to click on output. If the toolbox is missing you need to click on toolbox. The command bar, properties, explorer, if anything is missing you can go ahead and make, the, make it appear here. So that's for the bar up top and now we're going to look into the explorer. All right, so how does the Explorer work? So there are several things in the Explorer. There is the workspace, which is represents the items in the world and all of the items that you can see physically are inside of the workspace. The base plate is inside of the workspace. The spawn location, which is this thing, is inside of the workspace and everything you're gonna be putting inside of your game that you can see with your own two eyes is going to be inside of the workspace. <clears throat> Next, we have these players, and we're going to skip over that because we're not going to be using this. And this is usually just monitored by Roblox and used by Roblox. And just most of, for the most part, your players, once you click play, as you can see here, your player will go inside here. So it's just managed by Roblox for the most part. <clears throat> just so you can see. Here, when I spawn. If you go to players, you can see dev and of course symphony, which is my username. All right. So what do we have after? We have lightning, which is the lightning of the world. As you can see, if I remove everything, that's how it looks, which is extremely different. We have material service, 
replicated first, which we're not gonna go into yet. Replicated storage, which is frequently used in the, when it comes to Roblox Studio. Server script surface, which is as well frequently used. Server storage, starter GUI, starter pack, starter player, teams, sound service, and text chat service. So most of these are pretty self-explainable, as you can see. And uh, let's actually let me tell you first of all uh, about the ones that are mainly used. So we have number one, uh, lighting is used quite frequently. Workspace extremely frequently. Uh, service script service, a lot of scripts go in there. Service storage, a lot of things get stored. Starter UI, all the UIs are there. Starter pack, some tools. Starter player, some scripts as well. And yeah, as well for Starge UI, a lot of local scripts since it kind of works on the local side of the player. So I'm going to tell you about the difference between a script and a local script in a bit. But before that, we're going to go ahead and dive into something else. So let's actually start by learning the basics of scripting. So we're going to go into service script service and insert a script. A script means it is a script that's going to be run on the server. A local script means that it's a script that's going to be run uh, on the client. So a local script mainly works in starter GUI, perhaps starter... Mm, where else would it work? Pretty sure starter player, starter character. But those are like the only two places local scripts usually are in. And then there's scripts which are pretty much can be every anywhere but are mainly uh, put in service script service. Some of them are in workspace, not highly recommended, but it's mainly in service script service. All right, so once you create a script, as you can see, there is this print hello world. So what does this print hello world exactly do? As I was saying, what exactly does print hello world do? So we're going to test this out by simply clicking play or run, since we don't actually need to click play right now. Let's run and boom, it prints this message in the output that says hello world server. So that's the difference between server script and a local script. Here it would say client for a local script and it would be blue. But since this is run on the server, uh, it says server and it's green. So there's a big, it's very important to know the concept between a server script and a local script since it comes in very handy uh, later on when you make your game since uh, there's things you want in a server no matter what like uh, data and some of the things you need in the server and you don't want in the client since they could be easily exploited in the client and easily modified so <clears throat> without getting more into further of that we're just going to uh, uh, tweak with the print statement and play with the print statement all right so if you don't already know how to do this I want you to go ahead and try to play with the print statement all right so I want you to try to change this print statement to whatever you want and then run it again and watch it print. So let me do it. My name is Blocks Devs. Now let me run and let's see what happens here. It says my name is Blocks Devs. That's great. All right. So as you can see now we have this printed. My name is Blocks Devs, which is great. So that's how a print works. It will put something and push something into the output that will let you know that, oh, my name is Blockstevs. But it's mainly used when it comes to debugging or just for sort of checkpoints in your script. So in this case of usage, it's completely useless, but it comes in very handy when you actually uh, make a script and start making systems in your games. So let's start learning about... Um, about variables so variables is quite literally the base of any scripting language right whether it's python lua uh, even json has variables um literally every single language or well unless it's like some type of data structure language that doesn't have variables that i don't know about but literally every single language that is used to script your code has variables one way or another. And I'm going to show you how variables work in Lua because in every single language it's a little bit different. In Lua, 
what we work with is local. So we do local, which means that this variable is local to the script. <clears throat> Name equals, uh, let's just say, um, Let's just find a name, a Jonathan Joestar. Okay. So local name equals Jonathan Joestar. That's cool. So now we know that the name of the person we're looking at is Jonathan Joestar. Now we can do local age equals uh, 90, right? Jonathan Joestar is an old man. He's 90 years old, all right? And now we can see here that there's a difference between the name and the age variables and what is the difference of course the difference is that there are two different types of variables this is a string variable which is a text variable and this is a number or int so they are represented differently as you can see yeah, there is those uh, quotation marks or yeah if I should if that's how you call them quotation marks which surround Jonathan Joestar if I were to say like this, Jonathan Joestar, it would give me an error because like, like, what are you talking about? Is this a variable? Like, what is that? Specify what that is. So we specify that this is a text. It's a string. So we put these two brackets. I mean, not brackets. We put these two quotation marks. And that makes whatever you put inside of, the, of it a string. So yes, if you put these two quotation marks here, this becomes a string as well. So here, in this case, we want the age to be an int value. But in some cases, you might want the age to be in a string or you might want to convert the age from an int value to a string. But we're not going to get into that just yet. All right. So now we know that there is two types of strings. There is, I mean, two types of variables, my bad. There is strings and then there is int values or number values, whatever you want to call them. But of course, there's more. There is objects, and then blah 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 blah, etc. But we're just gonna start with the basics, right? There is as well one of the base values that you need to know is a boolean value. So we're gonna start by local. Let's think about it. Likes burgers. Does Jonathan Joestar likes burger? Like burgers? Does he like burgers? Let's think about it. False. He does not like burgers. He's more of a traditional man. He does not like burgers, right? So, it's false. And that's a Boolean value. So what you call a Boolean value. A Boolean value can either be true or false. As well, it is capital sensitive. So putting them like this would cause an error. So make sure they're all lowercase letters. And yeah, Jonathan Dressard does not like burgers. Now, what if you want to print the name, the age, and whether Jonathan draws our likes burgers? All right, let's do this. Print name. All right. Now, hmm, you might be thinking, okay, maybe you can do um, plus h if you come from uh, another language, and uh, maybe plus likes burgers. And let's see if this works. All right. Let's see if this would actually work out. Boom. Attempt to perform arithmetic add on a string and a number. That's the problem. So, oh, it says, I can't add a string to a number to a Boolean. Like, that's not how it works. And that's when you might need to start converting values into strings, all of them. So, that's an example. You could do number... So first of all, this is a function to concatenate. So you do concatenation, this is a name, and like you can add anything to it. Let's say, uh, cool guy. All right, just for an example. Let's see what happens here, if I didn't do it wrong. Jonathan Joestar, cool guy, all right? So now, that's how you add something. Now, what if you want to add the age this way? Would it work out? Let's see if it would work out. Jonathan Joestar, 90. All right. So, so oh yeah, Jonathan Joestar is 90. Okay. It has 90 to it. It's not sticked properly. It's kind of a mess. 
And that's because we're getting to add a space here, technically. And that's it. Now, boom, we have, oh yeah, Jonathan Joestar 90. It doesn't really say anything here. It's just Jonathan Joestar 90, which is cool. So you could, okay, I want to add another conc concatenation. And boom. Uh, 90 years old, right? So we run. Jonathan Joestar, 90 years old. Wow, that's great. So that's the basics of how you can add um, strings together and combine things in a print statement. So here we just made a more sophisticated print statement that combines the name and the age. Now, would we be able to combine this boolean value of likes burgers? First of all, we don't want just false printing here. It's kind of strange. So we would need to do a function or statement that would say if likes burger equals true, then print Jonathan likes burgers. If likes burger is false, then print likes burgers. He does not like burgers. So. Um, that is something we'll dive into later because we're not going to go into if statements or anything like that functions and stuff like that just yet we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves so now we're going to look at something very very important in the base of scripting in roblox and that is going to be properties so for the sake of you being able to see the properties panel properly i moved to the left just a little bit so now we're actually going to check real quick so what is exactly like what are properties exactly let me give you a quick example let's spawn a part all right let's zoom into the part by clicking f so when you're far and you click f it zooms you close to the part so now we can see that when you select the part the properties are empty when you have nothing selected and when you click on the part and you select it you can see all these properties that appear brick color cast shadow color material material variant reflectance transparency and you can tweak all of those just like this you see the transparency get it more transparent change the color everything all right so that's great but what if you want to tweak these properties in a script so that's what we're going to be learning about i'm going to teach you how to tweak these properties from a script so I want you to guess what's the first thing you're going to need to do in order to even try to tweak these properties. It's something we've just practiced. Making a variable. So yet again, now you learn a new type of variable. And this new type of variable is the variable that's attached to an object in the workspace. So let's just say, let's name this part that we actually spawned a specific name. Let's name it John part. I just have a thing with John now. Everything is John. It doesn't matter. So this part is John part. Okay. So John part, we're going to create now a variable local John part, which is our variable equals. And now how are you going to access this? You know that this is inside of the workspace. So you can simply go and say workspace dot to get the children of the workspace. And there's going to be the properties of the workspace and the children of the workspace, but just look carefully and you'll find John part. All right. So if you type John part, you will get John part. So now we've got our part. Now, what if you want to change, let's just say the transparency of our part, John part dot transparency. All right. So that's how you access the properties of it dot. And then you type in the property you're looking for and you'll find it equals now let's see, transparency is a number, so we should put a number, 0 0.5. Now the, ha uh, the part should be half transparent. Let's see what happens. Boom, pow. As you can see, as soon as we ran the game, the part became half, trans half transparent. Amazing. So now what are we going to do? Let's just say, I'm going to give you a, um, I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to go and find out how to change the brick color from fossil to really red, which is this one. I mean, not from fossil to really red, just change it to really red. Doesn't matter what your color is, just change your color of your parts to really red, all right? So that's your challenge, and I'm gonna, and feel free to go ahead and look on the forum 
look at the APIs. That's very, very important because when you're gonna be scripting, you're always gonna be looking at the APIs, the forums, asking for help. It's very important to your learning curve. So I kinda want you to experience this because changing the brick color is not as simple as changing the, the transparency. It's a little bit different, it's a little bit tougher. So I want you to kind of challenge yourself a little bit. So go ahead and try to change the brick color to really red. And hopefully you've tried by now. And now I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's see. John part dot brick color. All right. So we've got the brick color equals. Now a lot of y'all might do this really red. And unfortunately, this is not going to work out. What you need to do is do brick color, which is a data type that provides predefined lists of names of colors. Okay. Dot new. So you do a new color, you create a new color for this part. And then you type in the name of the color really red now this should work and this should change the color to red boom so if you succeeded with this congratulations if you haven't that's totally fine since it is kind of tricky you are not going to know just out of nowhere that yeah you're supposed to do brick color dot new it's something you learn and that's just to show you that roblox studio and luau can be a little bit different and you're going to need to get used to the parameters to get used to the syntax get used to everything that's allied to the properties and parts inside of the game to be able to create your own world and your own game and hopefully one day get successful so we're gonna end this first episode here and i hope you enjoyed and learned a couple of things in this first episode and if you want to see more episodes be sure to drop a like a subscribe if you want that would be really appreciated and I'll see you guys on the next episode, hopefully. Yeah, bye.